this is the third installment to radical Islam. And it centers on Abu Musa al zarqawi He was born in 1966 in Jordan, and he dies 2006 in Iraq. He is going to transform radical Islamism once again. We saw how Qutb, the original philosopher of radical Islam, institutes jihad. Bin Laden comes up with the idea of attacking the far enemy, the United States. Zarqawi is going to come up with the idea of building a caliphate here today in Iraq. And he is going to add a new element, which is a virulent anti-Shiite element to Islamic fundamentalism. Zarqawi believed that America's entrance into the war in Iraq in 2003 was a great opportunity because it would allow the Islamists to drag the Americans into a fight on the ground in which America would be weakened and ultimately destroyed. His big innovation is a notion that you can build a caliphate today and that we should go after the Shiites. So he adds an element of anti-Shiism that had never been so pronounced in the Islamism of bin Laden or Qutb. Zarqawi was a regular street thug in Jordan. He was arrested, put into jail, tortured, and he finds Islam in prison, as many Islamists do. He's released at the end of the 80s from prison in Jordan, and he goes to Afghanistan, where he's hoping to join the fight with bin Laden. But Russia is in its last days. The war in Afghanistan is winding down. He tries to impress bin Laden in Afghanistan and eventually help to run a paramilitary training camp. But his hatred of Shiites and his desire to kindle a fight against them caused a lot of friction with bin Laden. And we have to remember that bin Laden's mother was an Alawite, which is a Shiite offshoot. So he did not embrace this virulent anti-Shiism. Zarqawi only became famous after he traveled to Iraq in 2002, just before the United States was to invade Saddam Hussein in 2003. Now it's worth noting that one of the main reasons that the United States and George W. Bush used for invading Iraq was the claim that Zarqawi, this member of Al-Qaeda that was in Iraq, in fact, he was in the Kurdish northern part of Iraq in 2002, had links to Saddam Hussein. So the United States made an argument that not only was Saddam Hussein rekindling his effort to build an atom bomb, but that he was in cahoots with Al-Qaeda through Zarqawi. This turned out to be completely false. There were no links between Zarqawi and Saddam Hussein, who was a secularist. But already the CIA had him in their crosshairs in northern Iraq in 2002. When the United States invaded Iraq in 2003, it set about trying to destroy Saddam Hussein's government and then rebuild it with one that was more representative. The Sunnis of Iraq are only 20% of the country. Saddam Hussein was a Sunni Arab Muslim. The Ba'ath Party, the single party in the state, was also dominated by Sunni Arabs at the top. So was the Iraqi army. So the United States disbanded the army, criminalized the Ba'ath Party, and hunted down bin Laden and his closest 50 followers. Once the Sunnis were thrown out of power, the United States turned to the Shiites. Shiite Muslim Arabs are 60% of the Iraqi population and sought them out as potential allies who could build a new government. They would represent the majority and be more representative. The Sunnis who were cast out of power and cast down to the bottom of society after being at the top were infuriated. 
they felt that they were being marginalized and could, would be discriminated against, and that a divine order, an order in which the Arab world was not only Arab, but Sunni Arab, was being defiled, and that Shiites, who were not good Muslims, were being catapulted to the top. That was the view of the radical Sunnis, like Zarqawi. Zarqawi had a fine strategic mind. He realized that in order to destroy the Americans who had a superior military, he had to start a civil war, a war between the Sunni aggrieved Muslims and many of the military figures, the 400,000 members of the Iraqi army that had been thrown out of their jobs, that they could recruit amongst this large Sunni community and get them to attack the Shiites. And that if the Shiites counterattacked, it would create a you're either with us against us. It would split the Islamic world along sectarian lines. And that Sunnis would win this battle. Why? Because 85% of the Islamic world are Sunnis. They could call for jihad, get foreign fighters to come pouring in to Iraq the same way they had in Afghanistan, and that they would take on America in this foreign land that didn't belong to them, and they would win the war for hearts and minds, they would recruit and mobilize Sunnis, and they would destroy the Shiites. In late 2004, he officially set up an al-Qaeda branch and pledged allegiance to Osama bin Laden. His group became known as al-Qaeda in Iraq, AQI. And Zarqawi was given the al-Qaeda title Emir, or Prince, of al-Qaeda in the country of the two rivers. Two rivers, that means Iraq, Mesopotamia, the land of the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. For all of his militancy, he gained a nickname as Sheikh of the Slaughterers. He carried out the bombing of the UN headquarters in Baghdad right at the beginning of the US occupation. He killed 22 people as well as the head of the UN mission in Iraq. And this had the effect of scaring the entire international community. All the NGOs that had, had flocked to Baghdad thinking they were gonna rebuild Iraq all left. And most foreigners left. This led the United States to build up a small enclave it called the Green Zone inside Baghdad that was behind big high walls. So the Americans became captives in the center of Baghdad, fearful of this ongoing insurgency. In 2005, he launched his war against the Shiites. The bombing of the al Askari Mosque in Samarra in 2006 led to a terrible tit-for-tat war between Sunnis and Shiites. Shiites immediately began to attack Sunnis, attack their mosques, and infuriate Sunnis. Sunnis attacked back, and it became this cyclical war that uh, the United States could not dampen. The U.S. saw all of its attempts to build understanding between the different communities, to develop power-sharing government, completely collapse. And this is the beginning of what has been called the surge in Iraq, where the United States sent in tens of thousands more troops and began to recruit Sunni tribes to fight against al-Qaeda. Through the surge, the United States was eventually able to largely defeat Zarqawi and al-Qaeda. Zarqawi himself was killed in 2006. Other leaders sprung up, but by the time President Obama decided to pull troops out of Iraq, 2010. Al-Qaeda was only a shadow of its former self. It had largely gone underground. A new Shiite-dominated government led by al-Maliki was in power, and the United States believed it was safe to leave Iraq. And the Shiites, it must be said, did not want the United States in Iraq. They made it almost impossible to keep troops there by not renewing the contracts under which they were allowed to operate in Iraq. Obama pulls out American troops, but a year later, 2011, what happens? The Arab Spring. And this is gonna turn the entire situation back on its head because Syria, the state next door to Iraq, falls into civil war. 
The minoritarian Shiite government led by Bashar al-Assad, an Alawite, is beset by an uprising largely led by Sunni Muslim Arabs who are the majority in Syria. Assad has to pull his army out of the east of Syria. That's the entire area along the Iraq border. And these Al-Qaeda members are able to slip into Syria and rebuild in eastern Syria. By this time, 2010, Al-Qaeda has a new leader called Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. He renames the organization the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS. In Arabic, that's al-Dawla al-Islamiyya fi Iraq wa Sham. Syria's name Sham, and that means a greater Syria, the Levant, really. So this leads to it being sometimes interpreted as Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. It doesn't really matter which one you use. They both mean the same thing. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is going to rise up and rejuvenate this organization that spreads rapidly in Syria and in 2014 is able to sweep back into Iraq, conquer almost all the Sunni Arab parts of Iraq. And this launches a new war with the United States being sucked back into Iraq and into Syria in order to destroy this new incarnation of a more lethal, more potent, more centralized Al-Qaeda in Iraq and Syria. So to conclude, these three men, Sayyid Qutb, Bin Laden, and Zarqawi, each take radical Islamism that starts in the 1960s into different phases from Egypt, to Afghanistan, to Iraq and Syria. Caliph Baghdadi establishes a caliphate, something that Zarqawi was trying to do. He builds a centralized army and he builds a state.